Hello professionals. Welcome to my YK360 YouTube channel. In this video we are going to go through some of the question and answers for Saudi Aramco work permit receiver exam. Question 1. What type of permit should be used for the erection of scaffolding? Options are A. Cold work permit B. Hot work permit C. Confined space entry work permit D. Release of hazardous liquids or gases work permit. The answer is option A. Cold work permit. Question number two. What are hold tags used for? Options are A. To replace padlocks and lockout devices. B. For hot work. C. To explain reasons for locking out equipment. D. To isolate electrical circuit breakers. Answer is option C. To explain reasons for locking out equipment. Question number three. Where are work permits required? The options are A. All Saudi Aramco areas. B. All restricted areas. C. All assembly points. D. All fenced areas. Answer is option A. All Saudi Aramco areas. Question number four. Who is jointly responsible for the safety of people and equipment at the work site? A. The issuer and receiver. B. The issuer, receiver, gas tester and loss prevention representative. C. The receiver and other workers at the job site. Answer is option A. The issuer and receiver. Question five. A work permit may be extended for one additional shift. If options a the new oncoming issuer and receiver agree on conditions and sign the permit to extend it b only cold work is being done c the work is almost complete d after hot work the correct answer is option a the new oncoming issuer and receiver agree on conditions and sign the permit to extend it question six when can an electrician use a welder's work permit a when they work on the same equipment at different times. B. If both the issuer and receiver agree and state so on the permit form. C. When the foreman gives his permission. D. Never. Answer is option. D. Never. Question 7. Which of the following answers best describes a work permit receiver? Options are. A. Any maintenance supervisor. B. Saudi Aramco supervisors. C. All electrician. D. Craftsman, or others, who have been certified to receive work permit. Answer is option. D. Craftsman, or others, who have been certified to receive work permit. Question 8. If the receiver must leave the job site, work permit can be left with. Option. A. Receiver is not allowed to leave the job site under any circumstances. B. Anyone as long as the permits remain on site. C. Anyone who can read the work permit answer is option. A. Receiver is not allowed to leave the job site under any circumstances. Question number 9. Toxic flammable gases could be found in. Options are. A. Excavations. B. Office buildings. C. Lakes or rivers. D. Elevators. Answer is option. A. Excavations. Question number 10. Any work that develops heat or provides an ignition source in a restricted area requires what type of work permit? Options are A. Confined space entry. B. Cold work. C. Hot work. D. Release permit. Answer is option C. Hot work. Question 11. Why wind direction must be considered when a permit is issued? A. Dust particles may be blown into open lines. B. Because work always take place downwind of release. C. Flammable gases may be blown towards an ignition source. Question 12. The receiver's copy of the work permit which is currently in use should be. Options are. A. With maintenance or construction foreman. B posted or readily available at the job site c at maintenance or construction office d control room answer is option b 
posted or readily available at the job site. Please like and subscribe our YK360 YouTube channel and support us. Question number 13. The confined space entry permit requires that options are A. Only cold work. B. Non sparking tools be used. C. Only hot work. D. The confined space is properly isolated. Answer is option D. The confined space is properly isolated. Question number 14. Workers must wear breathing apparatus if hydrogen sulfide reading is. Options are A. Less than 10 parts per million. B. More than 10 parts per million. C. Less than 5 parts per million. D. More than 5 parts per million. Answer is option B. More than 10 parts per million. Question number 15. How many keys should there be for the padlock you use on a lockout device? Options are A. Only one. B. Two only. C. One for each of your workers. D. One for both the issuer and receiver. Answer is option A. Only one key. Question number 16. A workman is permitted to enter an atmosphere containing how much oxygen without wearing breathing apparatus? Options are A. 21%. B. 4.3%. C. 16%. D. 12%. Answer is option A. 21%. Question number 17. A major reason for conducting the joint site inspection is two. Options are A. Determine worker skills. B. Identify hazards and determine precautions. C. Check on work in progress. D. Check work permit certification cards. Answer is option B. Identify hazards and determine precautions. Question 18. Who must also sign a work permit issued over 16 hours? Options are A. Operations, Maintenance Superintendent. B. Only the issuers and receivers. C. Area Loss Prevention Superintendents. D. The Operations and Maintenance Division Heads. Answer is option D. The Operations and Maintenance Division Heads. Question 19. The issuer will issue work permit after its designated representative has. Options are. A. Obtain the approval and signature of managers. B. Ensure driving license checked. C. Conducted a joint site inspection. D. Get signed for maintenance. Answer is option. C. Conducted a joint site inspection. Question 20. When required ensure job site safety, additional precautions should be listed in which section permit? Options are A. Work to be done. B. Additional precautions. C. Joint site. D. Gas test result. Answer is option B. Additional precautions. Question 21. What is the number one cause of confined space deaths? Options are. A. Explosive atmospheres. B. Oxygen enriched atmospheres. C. Hydrogen sulfide poisoning. D. Oxygen deficient atmospheres. Answer is option C. Hydrogen sulfide poisoning. Question 22. What type of work permit is required for a worker to enter excavation which is greater than 4 feet deep? Options are. A. Release of hazardous liquids. B. Hot. C. Confined space entry. D. Cold. Answer is option C. Confined space entry. Question number 23. If you are working on a job and smell gas, you should. Options are. A. Stop work. Get out of the area and notify the issuer. B. Conduct your own gas tests to find out what it is. C. Keep working, but shut down all ignition sources. Answer is option. A. Stop work. Get out of the area and notify the issuer. Question 24. When welder and electrician work on same system or equipment. Options are. A. Each craft must have own permit. B. A superintendent must countersign the permit. C. 
No joint site inspection is required. D. One permit covers all crafts. Answer is option. A. Each craft must have own permit. Question 25. The receiver normally receives a work permit from. Options are. A. The project engineer. B. His immediate supervisor. C. Any qualified gas tester. D. The certified operations supervisor. Answer is option D. Certified operations supervisor. Please like and subscribe our Y. Question number one. Which permit is required when there is a potential for the release of a hazardous gas? Options are. A. Confined space entry work permit. B. Hot work permit. C. EOLB. D. Cold work permit. Answer is option C. EOLB permit. A work permit may be extended for one, one, additional operational shift, if. A. Only cold work is being done. B. The work is almost complete. C. The new oncoming issuer and receiver agree on conditions and sign the permit to extend it. D. All hot work. Answer is option. C. The new oncoming issuer and receiver agree on conditions and sign the permit to extend it. Question 3. When can a receiver leave a job site? Options. A. When the issuer has given permission in advance. B. Work has safely started. C. When supervising more than one job site. D. Never. Answer is option A. When the issuer has given permission. Question 4. Where are work permits required? Options are. A. All restricted areas. B. All fenced areas. C. All assembly points. D. All Saudi Aramco areas. Answer is option D. All Saudi Aramco areas. Question 5. If a joint site inspection is required, it must be done. Option. A. By the permit issuer and receiver. B. In the office if issuer and receiver agree. C. By the permit issuer and his supervisor. D. By the permit receiver and his supervisor. The answer is option. A. By the permit issuer and receiver. Question 6. Gas tests are conducted in confined spaces. Options are. A. To determine the correct temperature. B. Because all confined spaces have toxic gases. C. To determine the correct humidity. D. To determine if the space is safe to enter. Answer is option. B. Because all confined spaces have toxic gases. Question 7. Why do we have a work permit system? Options are. A. To inform you of restricted areas. B. To authorize permission to leave work. C. Timekeeping purposes. D. To provide a safe workplace. Answer is option D. To provide a safe workplace. Question 8. After the issuer and receivers have placed their locks and hold tags on the main breaker, they must. A. Make sure gas tests are 0% lel. B. Authorize hot work. C. Try to start the equipment at the local switch. D. Notify his supervisor. Answer is option. C. Try to start the equipment at the local switch. Question 9. When the receiver signs a work permit, he. Options. A. Receivers do sign work permits. B. Can sign as the gas tester, if approved by the issuer. C. Does not accept responsibility. D. Agrees with all conditions stated on the work permit. Answer is option. D. Agrees with all conditions stated on the work permit. 10. If new hazards develop at a job site that were not discussed on the work permit, the receiver should a. Contribute work until he is instructed by issuer. b. Continue work until a new work permit be issued. c. Stop the job and inform the issuer. Answer is option c. Stop the job and inform the issuer. Question 11. When grinding a piece of material of metal with a portable power grinder, the type of personal protective equipment required is. Options are. A. Safety glasses only. B. Goggles only. C. Face shield only. D. 
Safety glasses slash face shield combo. Answer is option. D. Safety glasses slash face shield combo. Question number 12. The maximum voltage permitted for portable power tool is. Options are. A. 110 volts. B. 220 volts. Circa 240 volts. D. 150 volts. Answer is option A. 110 volts. Please like and subscribe our YK360 YouTube channel and support us. Hot work area must be 100% box up with fire blanket. Live fire hose and fire extinguisher should be kept nearby hot work activity. Train fire watch should be assigned. Gas test should be conducted periodically. Proper PPE such as apron and others. Question number 13. Flammable material storage areas cannot be located within underscore of other buildings or structures. Options are A. 25 feet B. 50 feet Circa 50 meters D. 100 feet Answer is option B. 50 feet Question number 14. The ratio of vertical to horizontal spacing for a straight or extension ladder is. Options are A. 1 to 1 B. 2 to 1 Circa 3 to 1 D. 4 to 1 Answer is option D. 4 to 1 Question 15. A straight or extension ladder must extend over the edge of a roof, excavation, or scaffold platform by a minimum distance of. Options are. A. 1 foot. B. 4 feet. C. 0 0.9 meter. D. No set distance. Answer is option B. 4 feet. Question 16. The Saudi Aramco general instruction which sets forth the work permit. Receiver's requirement is. Options are. A. GI 1.200. B. GI 5.430. C. GI 2.100. D. GI 6.200. Answer is option C. GI 2.100. Question number 17. If someone is injured on your job site, a preliminary written report must be submitted to the Saudi Aramco PMT within dash period of time. Options are A. 2 hours B. 24 hours Circa 8 hours D. 3 days Answer is option B. 24 hours Question number 18. Work platforms must have tow boards, mid rails, top rails and access ladders once they reach a height of. Options are A. 4 feet B. 8 feet Circa 6 feet D. When the height is 4 times greater than the base width. Answer is opt circa 6 feet. Question number 19. Excavation spoils must be set back a minimum of dash from the sides. Of the excavation. Options are. A. 1 meter. B. 6 feet. Circa 3 feet. D. 2 feet. The answer is option D. 2 feet. Question number 20. The maximum working pressure on an acetylene gauge is. Options are. A. 7. B. 10. C. 15. D. 19.50. The answer is option C. 15. Question number 21. During storage of oxygen and acetylene gas cylinders they must be separated. By. 1. A fire resistant wall. Or. 2. A distance of A. 20 feet B. 50 feet C. Not required if protective caps are on D. None of the above Answer is 20 feet Question number 22 Which of the following would be classified as a Class A fire? A. A fire involving ordinary combustibles B. A fire involving flammable liquids C. A fire involving combustible metals. D. A fire involving live electrical equipment. Answer is option. A. A fire involving ordinary combustibles. Question number 23. 
The soil type is least stable in an excavation is. Options are. A. Type A. B. Type B. C. Type C. D. None of the above. Answer is option C. Type C. Question 24. Which of the following factors does not affect the load capacity of a mobile crane? A. Boom length. B. Boom angle. C. Extension of outriggers. D. Installation of anti-tube block device. Answer D. Installation of a anti-tube block device. Question number 25. How long is a work permit usually valid? Options are. A. One month. B. One week. C. One shift. D. One day. Answer is option C. One shift. Please like and subscribe our YK360 YouTube channel and support us. Subscribe to our YK360 channel. Let's start the session. Question number one. What are the five steps to stop work? Options are A. Stop, notify, evaluate, educate and follow up. B. Suspend, notify, discuss, confirm, and communicate. C. Stop, notify, investigate, communicate and follow up. D. Stop, discuss. Answer is option. C. Stop, notify, investigate, communicate and follow up. Question number 2. Who is authorized to stop unsafe work? Options are. A. Equipment coordinator. B. All personnel. C. Environment technician. D. No one is authorized to stop work. Answer is option B. All personnel. Question number 3. Do contractor employees have authority to stop work? Options are A. Yes, with division head approval. B. No. C. Yes, with issuer permission. D. Yes. Answer is option D. Yes. Question number 4. An excavation deeper than dash feet, dash meter, is considered to be a confined space? A. 6 feet, 1.8 meters. B. 5 feet. 1.5 meters c 4 feet 1.2 meters d 8 feet 2.4 meters answer is option c 4 feet 1.2 meter question number five a confined space has restricted dash and dash options are a leaving and escape b entry and exit c Exit and egress. D. Leaving and exit. Answer is option B. Entry and exit. Question number 6. The atmosphere of a confined space is unacceptable if the oxygen level is below dash percent or above dash percent. Options are. A. 19.5% and 22%. B. 20% and 21%. C. 19% and 22%. D. 20% and 23.5%. Answer is option C. 19% and 22%. Question 7. Diesel or petrol exhaust fumes near confined space may contain dash that can present hazard during confined space work. Options are. A. Carbon monoxide. B. Carbon dioxide. C. Carbon trioxide. D. Oxygen. Answer is option A. Carbon monoxide. Question number 8. The air temperature inside a confined space is not considered when evaluating the working conditions in a confined space? Options are. A. True. B. False. Answer is option B. False. Question number 9. What must you have before entering into a confined space? Options are A. Valid confined space entry permit B. Valid shift work schedule C. Certification and training 
Answer is option A valid confined space entry permit. Question number 10. What are the roles you need for confined space entry? Options are A. CSC supervisor, foreman and employee. B. Entrant, flagman and coordinator. C. Standby man, fireman and supervisor. D. CSC supervisor, an entrant and a standby man. Answer is option D. CSC supervisor, an entrant and a standby man. Question number 11. Which of the following are part of a standby man's responsibilities? Options are A. Monitor internal and external activities. B. Never leaves the entry point. C. Never enters the space. D. Maintains communication. E. Order an evacuation in case of emergency. F. All the above answers. Answer is option F. All the above answers. Question number 12. Which of the following are part of the entrance responsibilities? A. Only enters after all precautions are in place. B. Understands the work assignment. C. Communicates with the standby man. D. Alerts the standby man in case of emergency. E. All of the above answers. Answer is option E. All of the above answers. Question number 13. A confined space entry permit is required for jobs when you enter a confined space? Options are A. True. B. False. Answer is option A. True. Question number 14. Vessel entry for cleaning activities in hydrocarbon processing plants requires a confined space entry permit? Options are A. False. B. True. Answer is option B. True. Question number 15. A confined space entry permit ensures proper preparation of the confined space before entry? Options are A. False. B. True. Answer is option B. True. Question number 16. A confined space entry plan is the written plan to isolate, clean, drain, purge or ventilate a specific confined space? Options are A. Audit B. Quotation C. Procedures D. Report Answer is option C. Procedures Question number 17 During the joint site inspection, all hazards and controls are identified and recorded on the confined space entry permit? Options are A. True B. False. Answer is option A. True. Question number 18. Rescues from a confined space can only be done by? Options are A. The confined space entry supervisor. B. The craft foreman. C. The standby man. D. Trained rescue team. Answer is option D. Trained rescue team. Question number 19. The standby man must have an ensure all entrants sign the CSE dash for all confined space entry. Options are A. Air mover. B. Vacuum truck. C. Entry log. D. Training plan. Answer is option C. Entry log. Question number 20. Ignition sources must be eliminated or controlled in a confined space. You must ensure. Options are. A. Periodic gas tests are performed. B. Fire watch and fire protection equipment is present. C. Air movers and other electrical equipment is grounded. D. All the above answers. Answer is option D. All the above answers. Question 21. Locking and tagging equipment lets other operators, contractors or maintenance crews know that the equipment is safe to work on and cannot be dash. Options are. A. Repaired. B. Switched off. C. Energized. D. Serviced. 
Answer is C. Energized. Question number 22. While equipment is being worked on, isolation and loto will prevent dash. Options are A. All circuit breakers from opening. B. Confined space entry. C. All valves from closing at the same time. D. A sudden release of energy or accidental startup. Answer is option D. A sudden release of energy or accidental startup. Question number 23. An isolation plan is needed for complex or non routine isolations? Options are A. True. B. False. Answer is option A. True. Question number 24. Sometime do not operate warning devices are placed on an energy isolation device. What is this called? Options are A. Tag out, hold tag. B. Lock out. C. Energizing. D. Return to service. Answer is option A. Tag out, hold tag. Question number 25. You can return a system to service after completing isolation only when any affected personnel are. Options are A. Clear it from the area. B. In the area. C. Fully certified. D. Locked. Answer is option A. Cleared from the area. Hope you under. Hello professionals, in this session, we have some interesting, practical questions and informations to feed your knowledge. In this session we are going to assume a work condition and we are going to figure out the mitigations and PPE and more. Let's start the session. You're a contractor work permit receiver in one of the Aramco plant. Your company have taken a road repair contract. Your work is to break the asphalt on the road using jackhammer. Jackhammer is energized by pneumatic energy. Pneumatic energy is supplied from portable air compressor. In this work condition, what are all the steps you will follow and what are all the PPE required? Take your time to imagine, I will give you short time, then we will discuss. Yes you're done. First thing you need to do is get permit. You need to get hot work permit because you're going to use air compressor to supply air, so hot work permit is required. Then you need to check the air hoses and secure them with safety slings. Make sure all the hoses is secured with safety slings and safety pins. Next thing is to check the grounding for the compressor. Grounding is to be provided for all the equipments to avoid the sparks causes by static electricity. Next thing is the important one, it's the PPE. You must use anti-vibration gloves for this jackhammering activity. Jackhammering will cause excessive vibration, so the worker who is operating the equipment must wear vibration gloves. Steel toe must be worn by worker in order to protect his toes from accidentals miss of jackhammer chisel. Next PPE is earmuff. Jackhammer operation will cause you excessive noise which is above 85 decibel, so you must wear double hearing protection. Next PPE is face shield. Face shield must be worn by all workers performing the task. It's because there is possibility of flying objects which will make your injure. While doing jackhammering, you must barricade the area completely and keep proper signboards to alert the trespassers regarding the work hazards, also prohibit them from entering the area. You also must provide flag man to bypass the vehicle to avoid any traffic. Thank you for watching this session, hope you gain some knowledge. Kindly share your thoughts in comments. Please subscribe and support me. Have a great day.